and um, thanks for that beautiful introduction. Um, okay, so medicinal cannabis therapy is what I like to talk about. My father was a herbalist, right? And so I just kind of um, grew up making herbal medicines and using herbs instead of um, chemical medicines. And it was about, mm, not 55, 95. <laughs> When I read that book, I was born in 55. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and, and, and the book said, you know, before that I thought, you know, cannabis was a drug, just like we all used to think, yeah? Um, so I didn't think twice about it. I had a car accident and crushed several vertebrae in my back, and I lived in chronic pain, but I knew smoking can marijuana or cannabis actually helped me with the pain, so I, I thought it was a drug, but I was, it had to work. So I smoked heaps of it until 1995. People used to run away from me when they see me come. Quick, put the gun away, here comes Ray. Yeah, he <laughs> smoked a lot. And I could easily, on a bad day, I could go through an ounce. I could smoke an ounce of buds, and that's just outrageous. Okay, so for 95, I read this book and it goes, cannabis is herbaceous. All these pennies just dropped in right then. Um, and calm down, yeah. And I realised, you know, okay, uh, I can make all of these medicines that I've been making with, with my parents uh, for so long out of cannabis. Do you really need this? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. No, use it. Yeah, use, it. use this one, mate. Use the other one. It's alright, they're getting fixed. Use that one. I've just got to switch you up. I don't think it's working. It is. Ready? Go. Okay, greeting. Yeah, here we go. All right, so then I realised, you know, okay, I could make all the medicines that I, that I make from herbs out of this herbaceous cannabis plant. Uh, same rules apply. So, first thing I made, like I said, was a cream from the roots to put on my back for this chronic pain. And it worked really good. Um, I thought it was great. And at the same time, there was another dude, like we were a bunch of hippies, right? We live on communes and say, you just got to walk to our places, you can't drive. Anyway, um, he lived over the hill about two k's from me and he had this tropical ulcer on his foot and he couldn't walk. And my two other boys picked him up, carried him all over the way to my place. They told him, oh, dad made this cream that'll kill the pain, right? So he's come over and I started putting it on his foot, but I really didn't know much about it back in 95, whether it was going to work for him or where you can antagonise things, right? So I was dubiously putting it on and he was saying, oh, this is soothing, keep putting it on, keep putting more and more on. So eventually I put it all over his foot and, um, and about an hour later, he got up, walked home by himself, got in his car, it was on his accelerator foot too, I don't know how he did it, drove from Mullumbimby all the way to the Mullumbimby hospital and they put him on drip straight away and said, if that inflammation doesn't come down by morning, we're going to amputate that foot. But it did come down with one application. I'm oh, sure I plastered it, but you know. So I was just blown out by this and went, right, I'm just going to make everything I can out of cannabis medicines now. And, um, and since then, I've made heaps. And I've got this book about medicinal cannabis therapy. You're welcome to grab a copy. Um, and so let's talk about how it works and why it works for so many different ailments, you know? Um, now in our bodies, we've got a natural system called the endocannabinoid system. You've probably heard about it lately. Um, it's only recently been discovered. Didn't know about it for years. Anyway, so what this system does is it touches every cell in our body and its main focus is to maintain homeostasis on a cellular level we're talking about right now homeostasis means perfect balance so this is a great meditation for everybody right get up first thing in the morning just kiss every cell in my body in perfect balance all right that's what your body is trying to do every day and that's how come we can walk around and have a good day and if you're having pain or if you've got cancer or if you've got some ailment that's because your endocannabinoid system in that particular area it's not, it's failing to maintain homeostasis. There's many different reasons why it can fail. 
But that's the reason why you've developed this armor. That's every armor. Okay? Yeah, you think I'm crazy? Well, I'm not. All right? This is, I'm a herbalist. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Doctors don't understand this because they're used to using one drug to shoot one ailment. Well, cannabis comes along and there's 450 plus that they've discovered so far, different medical molecules in one little drop of it. Okay, so they just freak out and go, well, I don't really know how to prescribe this. Okay, so when, okay, so endocannabinoids come from our body, okay, and they're the things that actually go into the cells and do all the heavy lifting, bring everything back to perfect balance, right? There's a few of them that our body makes. Um, and um, phytocannabinoids come from plants. Now, plants, phytocannabinoids in plants found throughout the plant kingdom, okay? But you're lucky to find four or five cannabinoids in each plant, and most of those are herbs. That's why herbs work so good. Okay, so, um, I mean, when you look at cannabis, there's like 150 different medical um, cannabinoids in there. So it's very packed with, that's why we like cannabis. Because it, like, herbalists call it the king of the herbs because it's used for everything. Okay, and that's the reason. Because it can mimic what our body already does, right? It can copy it, it can make, and this just fortifies our own body and it's you that does the healing not cannabis cannabis just boosts your body's ability to be able to do so do you understand yeah does that make sense okay so when the scientists do their tests on whatever they're doing their tests on it could be human cancer cells or pain or epilepsy or whatever, they always come up with the same answer. Yes, cannabis works against blah, 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 over a duration and in a dose-dependent manner. They're the two things we really need to remember. Right? Duration means you've got to keep it in your body 24-7, just like you'd take a course of antibiotics. We've all been into that and you all understand that. Every four hours or so, you've got to have some more. Keep the levels stable in your blood. Okay, um, and how long a duration? Until you reach homeostasis until you have got rid of everything that you want to get rid of and be, feel healthy and fit again. Okay, now, dose dependence means your healing rate depends on your dose rate. Now, just for example, so we're talking about cancer, healing rate is how fast your body can shut down cancer cells and replace them with healthy cells. Okay, how fast your body can do that is your healing rate and that depends on the size of your dose. So you can have Big doses cause more healing than smaller doses. That sort of makes sense, right? So, there is a limit, and that is how, your, how much your body can tolerate in one dose. All right? Now, if you have more than your body can tolerate in one dose, possibly adverse effects, and I do say possibly because it may not happen. Everybody's different. And, and why? Because we all metabolise at different rates. Okay, so everyone's got different metabolic rates. Okay, so that's why it can affect people differently. Um, and what were we talking about? Um, yeah. So the limit is how much your body can actually tolerate in one dose. Now, this is not a big problem because. As you get used to it, as following your duration, through your, dura your body will, tolerance will increase and you'll be able to handle a bit more each time. Okay, so usually it takes, mm, if you've never had cannabis before, it'll probably take about four days for your body to get used to it. But if you smoke cannabis fairly regularly, then it'll only take a day or two for your body to get used to the dose you're on. So if you are taking, uh, if you are taking a dose, say, um, to reach homeostasis, then you probably start off, we'll just pick numbers out of the hat, you start off with one drop and you might have that with every meal. And then before bed you probably have two drops, okay, because you've got to get all the way through to the morning, you want to keep your levels up and it's only going to knock you out anyway, so you're going to go to sleep, so it's all good. So 
um, the next couple of days you'll be standing on your ear handing that. No, e easy, okay? So that's when your tolerance is increased. So now you can safely go two drops with every meal and three drops before bed. A few days later, what were we up to? Three, three drops with every meal, four drops before bed. Yeah, keep going like that. Just keep increasing your dose until there ain't no more symptoms. And that can take, depending on what you've got, a week to a year. You know? Uh, I know a lady who was suffering from epilepsy uh, and she um, used to get seizures every couple of minutes, all the time. Pretty much never got really out of them. Okay, and she took the first dose, didn't have, only had about two or three seizures that day. And then I said, come on, we need to do this properly, so you've got to follow this protocol. And so she thought, oh, well, it seems to be working, so I will. And so she did. Um, and she ended up consuming about 40 grams of oil, of pure extract, um, over oh, probably six, seven months. She hasn't had a seizure since, and that was about four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So you just keep going and keep increasing. And then, and now, she still has a dose, but only a small dose, and, and she only really has it occasionally when she feels like it, right? Because some things can rattle you, you know? Um, and make you feel a bit nervous, and that's when she's susceptible to falling into epilepsy. So she can feel these triggers, and as soon as she feels something like that, which is very rare nowadays, she has a little dose. Um, so, you know, it's all about homeostasis, right? If you want to treat something like that's for chronic conditions. It's all about homeostasis. You want to reach homeostasis. You want to just keep increasing your dose until you do. This is what the doctors won't, don't know about. They think one dose, one level, that's it. Just keep going until you... And that will work, but it makes it a longer healing. So that's okay. You can, you know, if you feel like you, you want to heal at a slower level, sure, you can just get to a level where everything's starting to work and stay at that level and not can continue to increase, but it'll take a little bit longer time for you to reach homeostasis than it would if you just kept increasing your dose. All cannabinoids. Okay, now THC, CBD, they, there's, funny isn't it, but there's like um, 400 different medical molecules in cannabis and there's over 400 sites in our body yeah and not in our body but in each cell <laughs> sounds like a fairy tale doesn't it you can't even see cells and there's 400 sites in it what the hell um, well it doesn't put them all out at once it's kind of puts them out as required so this endocannabinoid system works on demand and we don't store endocannabinoids anywhere in our body. We make them as we require them and then we break them down when we don't require them. So, um, similar thing with serotonin. We don't store that, we just break it down. How do we actually make them? Okay, um, they're biosynthesized from mostly from, from all, from the food we eat but mostly from um, essential fatty acids, which are the omegas. Hemp seed oil rules because, well, it's connected to the plant, right? And so there must be some sort of balance in there that suits the plant that's grown nice and healthy, but that balance is perfect for our bodies. Because like once it's nice and healthy and so on, then you harvest it and then you extract the cannabinoids for medicine, then they are connected to the seed because the seed produced those eventually, right? And what? It, so the seed has um, oils in it that have omegas in it, and, and that are the perfect balance for our body. Okay. And, and why do we need these in perfect balance? Because it needs them to make them in the those receptor sites that we need most, 
that we don't use occasionally, that we, right, out of the 400. So, mm, anyone got any more questions? Yes, whole plant extracts are the best. Um, that's what herbalists recommend all the time. We only use um, um, isolates and distillates to boost something in a whole plant extract, right? So if we want to boost the THC level, we might get a little bit of pure THC and chuck it in just to bring the THC level up. That's pretty much the only reason why we use isolates and extra. And, um, Yes. Safest way would be to use a press, right? Because you just get the bud. It's got to be nice and dry. You pop it under the press. You hit the press down to about ten ton, and the oil will just squeeze out. Okay. Yeah, you can use a hairdryer one, one, one bud at a time, and that's like if you, you know, if you're doing this for medicine and you've got to have it at lunchtime, then in tea time, you want to do a few <laughs> doses, you know. Dry ice. Dry ice is a CO2 extract, and that works really, really well. Um, it's very safe, but at the same time, uh, it's pollution, and you know. Um, if you do it in a confined space, I mean nobody ever does, but you know, these are dangers, right? If you do it in a confined space, it can put you to sleep and you never wake up. Alright, but you know, um, same thing can happen if you, you know, run a heater in a confined space. You can use up all oxygen and just left with CO2 and boom, you're dead by the morning, right? That happens a few times down south where it's really cold. Um, so, Another good way is to use alcohol because alcohol is probably the safest of all the um, um, solvents available um, and ethanol does cause cancer, it is a problem, you don't want to use it too much, you want to make sure you get it all out. Um, so, you know, you just it, but it is the safest one. Compared to the other ones, oh, you don't want to hear about those things. You, you know, like butane and so on. You can blow yourself up, right? They're very dangerous. Okay, so alcohol, what you do with alcohol is you freeze it. You drop the temperature to a minus 20. Once you're below minus 20, the cannabinoids want to go quickly and the cruddy stuff that you don't want, like chlorophylls, concrete oils, a few other things, they will move slow. They'll still move, but slow. So you've got about three minutes from minus 20 to shake it up, get as much as you can into there, and then strain it straight away. If you see any hint of green in the, in the uh, um, ethanol that you're using, <coughs> separate them straight away. You can just pour it straight through a kitchen strainer, and you need a capture bowl. Right? Uh, and that will get all the leaf out. Uh, and that, that's where the um, chlorophylls come from, right? The green. Okay, chlorophyll is uh, a, a pigment, uh, colour, green. It does have a lot of medical qualities, but when you concentrate chlorophyll, it can cause a problem. It, yes, it can be hard on your tummy and it can give you a really sore, sore, sort of tickly sort of throat, like you've got a frog in it or something, you know. Um, but yeah, um, so it's, you know, getting it out is a bit of an issue as well um, at home. Um, slow way is to let the sun do it if you happen to have good sun like it is today. It'll work pretty good today, but that's not always possible. Um, and if you want to um, heat it to boil it to get it to get the eth ethanol out, well, that's a little bit dangerous. Um, but do it in, in an outdoor space, don't use an open flame. Um, and then just before you get to the end, you need to throw in about four mils of water, just pure water, um, and that sort of mixes with the alcohol, but at the same time, they boil at different temperatures. So the, by the time the water is boiled out, it would have pushed out all of the um, ethanol.
you make the cream? Ah, uh, from the roots? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's a really simple one. Um, you can do it exactly the same with ethanol, with, with uh, all of the, it's a herb, so you can do it with all of the other extracts, but the e it's water soluble, so that makes it really easy. All right, and water soluble, all we've got to do is just um, chop the roots up, chuck them into a bucket of water or a, or a pot of water, um, and boil it for 30 minutes, and blend it just as much as you can, just break it up because all of the good, just all the medical qualities we're looking for are inside. They're not in the bark, they're not on the outside, they're inside. So you need to crush it all up, open it all out. And um, 30 minutes, strain it out and then reduce it. It'll come down to a white cream. You gotta clean the roots, right? They're gonna be clean. No, you strain it first, you just boil it for 30 minutes, yeah. and then you might blend it, yeah. right, during the time. Like, like, I use a stick blender, but you know, you can just pour it into a blender and blend it, and then put it back into the pot. Um, um, 30 minutes of heating is all it really takes. After that, you, you blend it, strain it straight away, um, get all the stuff out, you don't want that in there. Um, you can. Like just a kitchen strainer will probably be adequate, but if you really want to make it silky smooth, um, then just pour it through some coffee filter paper. Okay, after you go through the kitchen strainer, then through the coffee filter paper, and that'll make it really silk silky smooth, but it doesn't have to be like a little bit of um, um, thickness to it is, you know, a of grit. It's not really grit, but it's because it's not hard. All right, but, um, Yes, and then just reduce it to a cream. Yeah, yeah, until it, yeah, yeah. you know how to reduce. It. Yeah, it's really simple. It's a very, it's a, one of the best extracts to work with. And the roots themselves, not many people are working with them. Um, but if you look at our traditional history, like in China or India, where they've been using medical cannabis for thousands of years, it, most noted are the roots. You know, in all of the herbal literature that we've got, most noticed are the roots. The roots are used for many different things, more than the flowers. So, um, yeah, they're and, and they're legal. Okay, there's no THC in them, no CBD, so you can process the roots, advertise it, do whatever you want with it, and there's no laws against it. You can drink it, yes, but there's a few things you've got to remember about the roots, and that is where the plant come from, okay? Because plants, especially cannabis, cannabis is a great soil remediator. So it will pick up um, heavy metals at, like a magnet. It will draw them and pick them up and hold onto them in the roots. Um, heavy metals, um, chemicals, and, um, and even pathogens, you know, like Especially if you're organic, going, oh, I just put chook shit on mine. Yeah, well, that's full of salmonella. Right. Oh, I just use cash it. Yeah, well, that's got E. coli in it. You know? So there's still a lot of pathogens that could be around the root. So you've got to wash them clean as. And then when you do the processing, um, well, like I said, go through a, a, a filter. If you know that the, that, that the plants are clean, then you don't have to step this, this step. But if you don't know where they come from, or you're sus in any way, then you put everything through activated charcoal filter. So you just put activated charcoal in a um, funnel with some... You can actually buy filters off the shelf for doing this, and they're already made for it. But if you want to make it yourself, you just get some activated charcoal and get that from the fireplace. Put it in your coffee filter in a funnel and then prime it by pouring water through it until it all comes through clean. Chuck the water away. And once it's coming through clean, then you can pour your extract through that. And you, you could do that several times if you wanted to. Um, and each time it goes through, it will come up clearer and clearer and clearer until it's perfectly clear. Um, that's still plenty of good medicine in there, but it takes out all, of, all the things that we don't want that are scary about the roots. Alright, so yeah, just be aware of that. Where the roots come from is very important. Uh, and, and you know, um, there are places along the creek, this used to be all dairy, 
Right, so there are places along the creek where they used to have dips and, and they fill these with chemicals and run all the cattle through it, right? And then now they've gone, they just fill the dips in, nobody knows where they are or anything, right? So you could accidentally plant a plant on top of that and collect all this stuff and not even know it. So I always use activated charcoal filters all the time. My dad taught me to do that because you never know, people lie to you, you never know where, you could, where it come from. Be, be careful with it, or if you're going to use it for a medicine, then it needs to go through activated charcoal filters. Yeah, you can buy them straight off the shelf. Um, just the best place to buy them is from aquariums, because aquarium because fish don't like chemicals. They die anywhere near chemicals. You can even spray fly, fly, fly spray through the house, and next all the fish will die. Right? They're very susceptible to chemicals. So. All of the stuff that the filters that they make for um, um, aquariums are, are, are very, very good to use. They're clean and um, and they take out those chemicals. Well, activated charcoal is very good. It takes out lots of different stuff. All right. It does take a little bit of the THC and the CBD. If you're going to put that through too, that's fine. But at the same time, um, because those are the most abundant in your extract, you're not going to lose very much of it. You know, you can shave a little bit off the top, but it's not going to be a big drama. Greetings. Um, so, yeah, okay, so the oil looks like this. All right, that one's from the leaf, that one's from the bud. And, um,. You can do, like butane extracts and, you know, CO2 extracts are good. They're still good. They're just dangerous. So I just don't want you to hurt yourselves. That's why I'm not talking that much about them. But these two are actually butane extracts. All right. Uh, and anyone got any more questions? Going to do any cooking. Cooking. Yes. You're the best shit. Pardon? You're the best shit. You're the best cook in town. <laughs> yes. Um, well, yeah, well, you can cook with it, you know. Um, but the problem with cooking is, with it is the dose, right? Um, you really... Cooking with it is more for fun than for medicine. But... Pythagoras argues with me every time, your food is your medicine, let your medicine be your food, I hear that. But at the same time, you know, you can't actually be quantitative about the dose that you're having because there's a little bit left on the plate, you know, there's a little bit in the pot that you cooked it with, right? And also, heat can decrease its medical properties, can, for too long and too high. So, um, so cooking is really more for fun and recreation than it is for medicine. Yeah, yeah, the leaves, the leaves have lots of, lots of medical properties in them, different from the flowers, because it's more exposed. The leaf is out tracking the sun, in the breeze. You know, um, so it's more exposed, so the cannabinoids on there are different to what's on the flower. But there's still some THC on there. There's probably a lot more CBN and, and the cannabinoids that get broken down by the sun. Probably, okay? I don't really know this, but I'm just assuming that because of where it lives. Um, but at the same time, when you try these two, like, they're, they're totally different. They come from the same plant. That's the leaf, that's the bud. They're totally different. They even look differently. Different colours, different, yeah. Um, this one might put you... This one makes me sleepy. This one makes me more alert. That's just me. Everybody's different. Sorry? Yeah, I've got a, a question. Um, I've got chronic myeloid leukaemia. Ouch. And, and yeah, I've, I've been on deathbed like countless times in the last 20 years and 
gone for medication and, and cleansing and staying alive and everything. And anyway, um, I tried strong organic oil from the integrated doctor from Canada. Yeah. Besides and stuff with and stuff like that. I got perfectly stoned, but I never got better. But like I heard what you were saying about um, taking it, taking it like. Three times a day, yes. three times a day, and, and at night time, four times a day. Yes. And so, like, like I was taking like a meal, like whatever it was, I don't know what it was a lot. I was the oldest, I was the oldest, I was the oldest. 25 to 30 drops is a meal. Yeah, that's pretty high. Yeah, that would knock me around. But, but like, it doesn't, didn't do me too much good, but like, yeah, so like, how much, what would you recommend someone like that, a chronic illness that never got better, um, resistant to the medications, like, you know, they've only just given me some out of mercy to keep me alive in the last 18 months, which is just like run out. We've got one month left, so it's about run out. But, like, I need to do something, and so I'm listening to you. Um, so you just reckon to start with one drop, two drops, three drops, like, so what would you... Uh, just start with one drop until your body gets used to it. Yeah. Alright, now that may take a while because by the time you get up to 20 drops, you won't feel anything. Yeah. You won't feel high, you won't feel... So you, you took that much yeah. too quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I'll okay? just put it at night time. I'll try the daytime and I'll end up in all sorts of trouble. Well, if you start off with very small doses, <laughs> does it... This, like, does it make you feel paranoid at all? No, I mean, I like, when I... Do you when enjoy I, being high? Um, it's alright, yeah. It's, uh, it's, well, I used to it do it, but I'm... It didn't annoy you anyway. All the time. I'm a, I'm a gospel evangelist, so like, I've got to keep it, you know, keep it limited. That's okay. You know? But like, um, at, at night time I would take it. Yeah. And, um... I did try it in the daytime a few times, but like you just get basically nothing done. And I already, I'm already weak and can't hardly do anything. So it's just like, you know, yeah, how, well, am I gonna, how am I going to juggle all this? And, and what oil, you know, what's the difference? Like, you know, do I take CBD with the THC yeah. or, you know, what exactly, you know, for someone okay. like me, you know, chronic case that like never got better, trying to stay out of hospital, what would you advise? I would advise. And it off the board. So aim for homeostasis, all right, so that means to start off with a duration, um, but start on small doses and make your duration and stay on that dose for three or four days. And we're talking okay? about what, what, uh, which oil? 50-50 uh, I would start off with, but that might change according to you. You can change it. Yeah. Right, but 50-50, they look. There's scientific evidence that tells us that the medical properties of cannabis and of oh, THC and CBD, when together, are more potent than either one of them by themselves. Okay. You understand that? So by putting them together, now why that happens is because THC uses the CB1, CB2 receptor sites. But CBD is very promiscuous and it can use several other receptor sites that THC doesn't use. Okay, and um, they're in my book. Yes. Uh, and because they use different bodily paths to achieve, achieve the same thing, yeah. homeostasis, yeah. right? They don't get in each other's way. Yeah. They don't block each other out. So the more cannabinoids you use, yeah the more balanced and effective medicine it will be. It's not to get you high, it's about getting you well. Okay? So the more different cannabinoids you can use. So the, the leaf and the bud mixed together will be quite good for you. And CBD as well. Right? So we want CBD from the bud, two of those. And CBD from the leaf. Is THC from the leaf? Is, I mean, where do they get Yeah, but I mean, it's the, more. C, CBD from the. CBD is the one that doesn't knock it out there. Yeah, that's right. So and that one's from the leaf? No, it's from a completely different, different plant. plant. Yeah. So you can have THC rich plants, yeah. which are everybody around here loves, and you can have CBD rich plants too, yeah. which are very low in, C, in THC. So. The THC plant, what we've bred just because we like it, when we get it tested, works out to about 20 to 1. So that means 20 times more THC than CBD. 
Okay. okay. So, I don't get it. So it's a CBD rich plant has 20 times more CBD than THC in it. Okay. You understand? But you're still saying to take 50 50. Right? Yes, mix them together okay. at about 50 50, or you can change that mix according to how you feel. So Probably best to try each one by itself, and then you will get an idea of what, what each one does. And they're like night and day. One will knock you out, and one will wake you up. Okay, now the problem with being woken up all the time is you, you, you get to overthinking. Okay, so you don't want, you want a balance of the two. Right? The problem with spacing your thoughts out is you end up going to sleep too much, right? So the balance of the two is where your beautiful day lies. And that can change, that balance can change. You might want to be really clear in the morning and, you know, de-stress of a night time. So you can change that balance, okay? So that's why I recommend that you get the two of them in separate container. We don't mix it for you. One last question. Yes. And that is, what would be the optimal thing to get the homeostasis? I mean, how many drops a day? Because like that 20 drops was like, you know, one meal. So like, how long? Like five, five drops, like three times a day. Yeah. And then the six. Would like, would that be an optimal dose? You know. No, because it's about homeostasis, right? When you're feeling good. Not when you're feeling so out of it you can't get it together or stand up. That's not, that's not homeostasis. Homeostasis is feeling healthy and fit. Imagine every cell in your body in perfect balance and do this regularly. Every cell in your body in perfect balance. Now, perfect balance doesn't mean that it's all healthy and all that. But perfect balance also means, oh, this cell's beyond repair. We'll replace that with a new one. And you know that all your cells are replaced over about 7, 11 years or whatever they say, right? In your body. So you're a completely new person. Okay? So that's happening all the time. That's about homeostasis. That's about perfect balance. All right? So you've got to have old cells we've got rid of. We've got to have new cells that we can replace it with it. That's homeostasis. Okay, and aiming for that, aiming for that is to take as much as you can, as often as you can, until you're feeling better. Okay? Now, as much as you can is a comfortable level, right? Not to the level where you can't get your day together, where you can't get up and walk around. That's uncomfortable. All right, so you go less than that. Okay, now when you start off, you start off on one drop. Now, one drop might even be too much for you. You might want to have half a drop or quarter of a drop, and you can easily do that by mixing it with something else like olive oil, or, and then you can get down to half a drop, quarter drop. And what about taking it when you, when you have, like, before your meal, after your meal, under your tongue, any, any specifics? With your meal is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it helps you digest too. Um, and... Um, um, uh, oh, your meals. Best to have oily meals. Now, I'm not talking about crappy stuff. I mean good oily meals like avocados or, you know, stuff that's nice and healthy and fatty because um, that will increase your bioavailability of everything in your tummy and so on. So. I don't really like DMSO because it can um, do things that you don't want it to do accidentally. Alright, so it can increase other drugs permeability into your skin or definitely, yep, 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 absolutely. Yep. You're welcome. Anyone else have any more questions? What about using coconut, not full but coconut oil? Okay, so different oils are digested or um, metabolized by different parts of our body, right? So coconut oil, the liver loves that, it tends to go straight to your liver, whereas olive oil goes through your lymphatic system. 
Okay, so if you want to target something in your brain around the limb, there's the leaps of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is all the fluid in your body that is not blood is your lymphatic system, right? So you've got joints, you've got eyes, you've got all sorts of places where there's not, there's mucus, right? It's not blood, but it's liquid. So that's controlled by your lymphatic system. So if you've got a problem in your lymphatic system, right, or you want to target something that your lymphatic system is looking after, then use olive oil. But if you've got a problem in your liver... Yes, yes, coconut oil. And, and these oils, they all work topically as well, okay, and very potent topicals, okay. Um, an example of that was they did a test in America on some people that had multiple sclerosis, right, and none of them could walk, they were all in wheelchairs, and they just rubbed in a full strength um, um, balm into their legs, and two, by two weeks, they all walked out of their wheelchairs. Right? So yeah, that's how powerful it is. It's really incredible. And again, dose dependent and duration are very important, which they didn't do in the test. They probably could have got them to walk out of there quicker if they had to put more strength and more on regularly. Can you repeat that? Big pardon? Repeat that. Can you repeat that again, that experiment that you walked out they had a full strength balm which is mixed at 100 to 1 so so one of these to 100 of um, olive oil which is I'm pretty sure they used olive oil all right so one of these to 100 olive oil and then mix it with beeswax let it set like a, like an ointment and then they just rub that in and rub it in. And again, I'm not sure whether they actually rubbed it in or just put it on. Just putting it on's okay, but rubbing it in works heaps better. You rub it in until, like when you first put it on, it's like oily, greasy, sort of fatty feeling. And then if you rub it for a while, then your skin will then go dry. As soon as it goes dry, you've rubbed it in, right? It's in. And what was the condition that people had again? Multiple sclerosis, which is horrible. You lose control of your muscles and... Did that for two weeks or something? Two weeks, yeah, that Once was it. Once a day, three times a day, they rubbed it on. Oh, uh, yeah, I weeks. can't remember Probably now, but it wasn't enough. They could have done it more. Yeah, yeah. I think they did it twice a day. And they were all walking? Yeah, they all walked out of their wheelchairs. And that was the THC? Yes. But they all work. All the cannabinoids are good. They all work. They all use different pathways. Their job is to maintain homeostasis all cannabinoids that we found so far that we've tested so far pardon yes again the balm will work really good okay so yeah, for diabetics, you know, it's a problem with the extremities. It gets really sore in your hands and feet and knees and so on. But you rub this in, works a treat. It stops the pain, reduces inflammation. It's got all the... It's trying to maintain homeostasis, right? There's millions of skin cells. There's trillions of them. Rub it in. And it's getting straight into the cells, right? And they put out the... See their, their um, receptor sites straight away as soon as they see THC, CBD, CBN, all of them. Right? They'll put out their receptor sites because they want that, because they know it's healing. They know it's all about homeostasis. And so, yeah, the more you use, the more effective it will be. Were they taking it orally as well at the same time? Or only no, this was just a topical. Um, but again, like, you know, these scientific experiments are crazy. They, 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 they do things that, like this, I could find heaps of holes in this experiment, right? I know it works, but the way they did it just didn't make sense, you know? Um, they, they, they're all on other drugs as well, right? So they've got all these other drugs in their system which are not taken into account at all. Um, there's heaps of holes in it, and, and also they're, they're whole psych 
you know, they're looking for negative things rather than at the benefits, so they miss a lot of the benefits because they're not looking for them. They're looking for things that are going to cause a problem, which they don't find. <laughs> well, when you were making that ointment, you said the plants are different and you chopped up the roots. Yes. Which plant was that? That was a high THC plant. High THC, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hemp seed oil is excellent, and one of the best. The only problem with it is you've got to keep it cold. Okay. The only problem. I've got ten minutes left, so think of any more questions. Come for it. The only problem with um, hemp seed oil is it's it, it will break down very easily at this temperature, and it's got things in it that you don't want breaking down, like the omegas, right? We want to we want to preserve them. They're very good. So um, the only issue with hemp seed oil is you need to keep it um, cool in a fridge. Fridge is fine. Yep, keep it cool. And you know, most of our um, medicines for herbs and so on, they they're not exposed to light, and and they and they've got a tight fitting lid, so no oxygen can get in there because they're the things that will damage it. All right. So most. Medicines are in a dark container, tight fitting lid, you know, glass. These ones here are clear because I wanted you to see it. But at the same time, um, these syringes are not just plastic. They're specially made to handle chemicals. All right, so. And you that, yeah, that, yeah. That the sun That's right. Yeah, and you're, only, you're supposed to use this pretty quickly, right? So. Well, yeah, that's right. Um, but you can just like just stick it under your arm for just before you actually want to use it, and it'll warm up, and then it'll come out really easy. So yeah, some books there. Can you go and book? Twenty more. I can go and get more. Um. That is a traditional method um, because the umbilical cord used to have connections to just about every organ in our body because that's where what it did when we were babies, right? Um, so yeah, there is um, some herbal medicines that you can put into your belly button. Um, how effective it is? Yeah, I mean. It, what do they call that? Complementary medicine. So you use that along with something else. Yeah. But it, it's effective. It does work. Mm -hmm. Is your book published on my Yes, on my website. So you can get a digital copy of it if you want, in colour. <laughs> so what's your website called? Medicinalcannabistherapy.com. It's on the book. We need a few more books, do we? All right. Here and run up and grab me some more books. I can get them if you tell me where to go. Uh, yeah, well, it's just on that pathway straight into the uh, into the uh, embassy. Is that to the right? Yes. Yeah. Straight through the, the hemp bar yeah. and into the embassy. Yeah. And just say, Radic wants some more of his books, please. Can Radic. I? Yeah. Okay. Can I have some more books? And we'll get them down here for you before we... Uh, I can even run up there. I should do it myself, couldn't I? We've got five more minutes. Anybody, any more questions? Yes. So when you are taking the drops and you decide that you're feeling well, you want to stop, you just stop like suddenly, like from one Yeah, no problem. Yeah. There's you just no... Stop any time. No. No. No issues. Because we make these things in our body. Okay? Uh, that's what gives us copies and mimics our own body. Yeah? So you can't, you know, get rid of all from your own body. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But after you've suffered something severe and you've just gotten over the final one, it's a bit scary to stop. 
you know. So I usually recommend people just go down to a really small maintenance boat. When they feel comfortable, that they can handle anything that life throws at them, then stop. Is there any medicinal value in, say, just boiling the kettle and making tea with some, say, leaves and tea? Certainly, yeah. They do that in uh, Escalade. They, they do that in China between villages, right? So, of course, everybody walks. Like, this is out in the poor place areas, right? Not in the city where they've got bullet trains and shit. No, this is out in the country where there's a lot of poor people. So in between the villages where they walk, they set up a little card table and they usually have a pack of cigarettes out. But anyway, they have a pack of cigarettes there and you can have a cup of cannabis tea, which gives you more energy to walk to the next town. Okay, but there are a lot of medical properties involved as well, it's not just energy. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in the league, yes? I mean, is there any side effects with uh, other cereal, like pharmaceutical drugs? Yes, there definitely is. Because the same um, enzymes that break down cannabis in your liver, oh, that one. Right, break down just about every antipsychotic that they've got. In my hand. Um, so they will react with antipsychotics. No, 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 uh, only antipsychotics. Yeah, uh, no, there's probably a few other ones. Because my mum is on some weird cancer drugs for like a blood cancer treatment. And I keep telling her she should try it. But okay, well, the best way to do... Most people who um, go on to medicinal cannabis therapy end up not taking those other drugs anymore. <coughs> and the way to do that is to start off with small doses and increase it over a, a period of time, as we were talking about before, right? And yep. as you're doing that, you're thinking, oh, I haven't got that much pain, I don't need these endone today. Or, you know, uh, I'm feeling pretty good, I think I'll cut this other medication down a bit. Okay? So as you increase your um, doses of medicinal cannabis therapy, you decrease the doses of the other ones, and um, that I seems to be the... What? Uh, I'm not sure. What? They told her that she has to keep taking her, her chemical medications for the rest of her life. That's crap. They just want money. They're just ripping her off. That's bullshit. Well, they think your body... They, they, they think your body's just made to break. Right, well it's not, it's made to work, right, and it's made, made to live in this environment, yeah, this environment with all these trees and all this stuff that's made to live in here and be part of this environment. As we breathe out CO2, those plants over there breathe it in, and they breathe out oxygen, so we're, we, we live together, we're made to live in this environment, and we're made to, to work properly, no one's made not to work, no one. Even people with disabilities, they can, they can be healed. Oh, sorry. But.